Um, please welcome the next presenter, Jamie Willems. Everybody has to eat. It is estimated that the Canadian food industry is worth $93 billion. Therefore, there is considerable financial incentive for some less honest producers to adulterate their products. That is, for them to add an ingredient of lesser, or equal, of lesser value to a product without telling the consumer. This is clearly illegal and can have a number of negative impacts. For example, a consumer who buys an adulterated product is not getting what they paid for and are being deceived about what they are eating. This is of particular concern for those with special dietary requirements. As well, honest producers are also affected by food adulteration, as it can result in a decrease in consumer trust in the industry and gives those willing to adulterate their products an unfair advantage in the market. Fruit juice is an easy target for adulteration. Fruit juices contain a lot of simple carbohydrates, and these carbohydrates are present in ratios and amounts similar to those found in some less expensive commercial sweeteners. For example, high fructose corn syrup. This makes these sweeteners easy to disguise in the juice and very difficult to detect. As well, consumers often cannot tell the difference between a pure and adulterated product. For example, on my slide, there are two juices. One of these contains 100% pure pear juice, while the other is pear juice to which 10% high fructose corn syrup has been added. Do you think you could tell the difference? Because these juices are often produced on a fairly large scale, the addition of even small amounts of commercial sweeteners, which are considerably less expensive than the juice, can result in significant financial gain for those willing to adulterate their products. Therefore, one of the major goals of my research is to develop methods to detect the adulteration of pear juice with these less expensive commercial sweeteners. I have done this by taking a look at some of the profiles of minor constituents in the juice and potential adulterants, namely looking at minor carbohydrates. These profiles act sort of like a fingerprint for these products as some of these compounds are present only in the juice, while others are found in only in the potential adulterants. Therefore, by analyzing these profiles, I can tell if a product claiming to be 100% pure pear juice is actually what it says it is, or if it contains undeclared ingredients such as high fructose corn syrup. It is hoped that the development of such a method will result in a decrease in food fraud and an increase in consumer confidence in the food industry. Thank you.